book readings with Miss Bernard. Hello all and welcome to day 19 of our Black History Month series. Today's story is Shirley Chisholm Dared, the story of the first black woman in Congress. Written by Alicia D. Williams. Illustrated by April Harrison. Let's begin. Meet three-year-old Shirley St. Hill, a busy little girl who asks way too many questions. She and her immigrant parents, along with her two baby sisters, live in a tiny apartment in Brooklyn, one they can hardly afford. Seeing that Shirley needs room to run, her mother thinks it might be a good idea to take her to her grandma's. Plus, they'll save money. So the girls and their mother board an old steamship in New York Harbor and set off for Barbados. After nine days, the family arrives to welcoming hugs and kisses. But just as the island smells and sounds start to feel familiar to Shirley, it's time for mother to say goodbye. Still, Shirley doesn't settle into sadness, oh no. She has work to do. Though she's younger and tinier than her cousins, she's just as strong. She hauls buckets of well water to thirsty cows, pigs, and goats. Shirley even bosses her cousins around. <laughs> when classes start in the British one-room schoolhouse, four-year-old Shirley proudly sits on the front bench and won't budge. That girl is daring. Back in the States, the Great Depression begins. Many people lose their jobs and can't afford homes or food. Mother makes little as a seamstress and father as a baker's helper. But they miss their daughter's laughter bouncing off the walls so much that after six years, they bring the girls home. Shirley moves back to Brooklyn. At PS 84, the principal introduces Shirley to her new classroom. Third grade? Hasn't she already learned third grade reading, writing, and arithmetic? Sure, she's only nine years old, but in Barbados, she had just been promoted to sixth grade. Sorry but you don't know American social studies or geography, the principal tells her. Hmph. In no time, Shirley is bored and restless. She snaps rubber bands at kids' heads. She flicks spitballs when the teacher turns her back. Finally, finally, the school assigns her an American history tutor. And just over a year later, Shirley proudly sits in the eighth grade. Every day over dinner, her father asks what she's learned. Every day, Shirley offers details. And every day he tells her, study and make something of yourself. In the evenings, Shirley listens in as her father and his friends discuss politics, how poor people are being mistreated and that folks should fight for their rights. She learns about a man named W.E.B. Dubois who spoke of Negro rights and Marcus Garvey, who spoke of black pride. By the time Shirley begins girls high school, her mother is warning, come straight home. Focus on your homework and piano practice. No pop music, absolutely no boys. Shirley breaks curfew. She lets boys walk her to the door, and instead of classical music, she plays jazz. That young lady is rebellious. Mother tries to explain that she's strict because she wants Shirley to grow up and be someone. Now meet 17-year-old Shirley, a smart young lady who attends Brooklyn College. She studies sociology and Spanish. It, it, is, it isn't acceptable for black women to study politics or law, but that doesn't stop her from joining the Political Science Society. 
After graduation, Shirley tries to get a job as a teacher, but over and over, she is told she doesn't look old enough. She finally exclaims to a nursery school director, give me a chance to find out whether I can do the job. That woman is persistent. And on the spot, the director of Mount Calvary Child Care Center hires Shirley as a teacher's aide. After work, Shirley travels more than an hour by subway to take classes at Columbia University Teachers College. She attends political meetings too. When she has a question, Shirley bravely thrusts her hand into the air. She asks, where's the money to make schools better in the Bedford-Stuyvesant community? Why isn't trash picked up regularly? Why can't bed have as much police protection as other districts? That woman is too persistent. Politicians promise to help, but don't. So Shirley joins the 17th Assembly District Democratic Club. During a time when women members can only do chores like writing thank you cards. Each year, the club holds a banquet to raise money and the donations are collected in cigar boxes. Shirley's role, cigar box decorator. She paints, glues pictures, and makes the boxes so dazzling that people can't help but give. Still, Shirley wants to know, why are only women making cards and decorating boxes? Why should we put up with this? Yeah, echo the other woman. Why should we put up with this? That Shirley is a troublemaker. Finally, the club sends a letter thanking Shirley for her hard work and kicking her out. Shirley isn't bothered. After all, people don't have to be members to attend meetings or to ask questions. When she is 25 years old, Shirley St. Hill marries her college sweetheart, Conrad Chisholm. Meet Shirley Chisholm, a busy young woman who still asks way too many questions. Teaching now takes over her life. At 29, she becomes director of the Friend in Need Nursery School, and a year later, director of the Hamilton Madison Child Care Center. In her community, politicians keep making promises, yet nothing changes. So Shirley steps her white Oxford heels back into politics. She helps create the Unity Democratic Club. She works to organize after-school programs for kids and improve housing conditions for inner-city neighborhoods. She organizes voters, stuffs envelopes, and circulates petitions. A seat in the New York State Assembly opens. But there's one problem. It has always, always been made up of daring, rebellious, persistent white men. Shirley isn't deterred. During the campaigns, words, words, and more words are thrown at her. Have you cooked your husband's breakfast yet? Shouldn't you be cleaning your house? Women ought to take care of their families, not run for office. Shirley hears only the most important words from her father long ago. Make something of yourself. All right. Election night, 1964. The votes are tallied. 18,149, 18,150, 18,151, 20,957 votes have been cast. And Shirley Chisholm wins by more than 16,000. Over the next three years, Shirley introduces bills to help disadvantaged students pay for college and to give unemployment insurance to domestic workers. She, she speaks up so much that assemblymen complain. When she refuses to follow their rules, they call her a bossy troublemaker. When she challenges them, they mutter that she doesn't belong. What does Shirley do? 
she runs for Congress. She posts signs and hands out flyers, talks to ladies sitting on park benches and men standing on street corners, visits housing projects, churches, and living rooms too. She works and works and works. Her campaign slogan is unbought and unbossed. Her fellow assemblymen refuse to support her. Even reporters ignore her, only interviewing her opponent. Shirley protests. Who are you, they retort. Just a little school teacher who happened to go to the assembly? Hasn't Shirley helped students pay for college? Hasn't she proposed bills to fund daycare centers? Hasn't she organized rallies, driven voters to the polls? and fought for the rights of the poor? But could she, dare she, win? Election night, 1968. The votes are tallied. 34,883, 34,884, 34,885, 52,433 votes are cast. Shirley Chisholm wins by more than 21,000 votes. This daring, rebellious, persistent troublemaker is the first African-American woman elected to Congress. And she never stops asking questions. The end. <laughs> What a wonderful, wonderful story. Life story of a bold and daring woman who never was afraid to speak up and speak out for what is right. All right, this has been another Book Readings with Miss Bernard. I hope you come back tomorrow for day 20 of our Black History Month series. I hope you have an awesome day. Bye-bye.